Welcome to another episode of Teach Me Terrain and all that. And as I mentioned in the first sort of introduction video uh, that I've done to this sort of new lease of life that I've given the channel, um, one of the projects that I'm tackling is uh, the Falklands War in 10 mil. Um, so what I thought today we would do, um, I have already done a platoon. We will look in future videos to um, painting up uh, those Pendragon figures um, and how I'm basing them and all that good stuff. But I thought today what would be nice is to uh, work on uh, a little bit of terrain. Um, now I've got, I'm going to do a video on building up uh, the kind of buildings on bases and for those bits, but the Falklands for a lot of it is fairly open. Uh, it is rocky in places. Um, but what I want to do today, um, and this is for a scenario for my playtesting on uh, Thursday, um, as I'm recording this, is just to put out some little um, kind of uh, sandbagged trenches, for want of a better phrase. They're not going to be sort of your World War One trenches. They're more like uh, holes dug in specifically for a uh, maybe a section or, or a fire team. Um, and probably with sandbags on the front. Um, obviously, because it's 10 mil, it's going to be slightly um, sort of artistic license rather than, you know, half a guy chopped up and in a base, you know, it, it's going to be something that we can add to the bases to represent the fact that they are dug in into, um, into trenches. Uh, and then when they come out, we can take that away uh, to represent or even just leave it in the position to say that's where the trench line is. So um, with that uh, kind of introduction out of the way, let's jump straight to the workbench and see how I do it. See you in a minute. And welcome to the workbench. So what I've got here then is I've got a base and I've got two bases of Argentinian um, Argentinian infantry. There we go. I'll just zoom in. Now these are ten mil uh, from Pendragon, as I said, and they currently sit on sixty mil by thirty mil bases. So sixty mil frontage by thirty mil down the side. Okay. So what I'd like is a trench, something to sit in front of this whole squad to represent them being in a trench. So my idea is going to be use some simple uh, bits of uh, craft um, materials that are lying around, uh, make it nice and simple, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's see uh, what we've got. So if we come back out and we go to the craft table, we're going to be using some jumbo craft sticks. Now, I think I got these in America. That's how long I've had them. And I've not used them. They're essentially, uh, some people might use them, I think, in hospitals, you know, for uh, dropping, uh, you know, putting on top of the tongue to press it down to look in somebody's throat. I just think of these as big lollipop sticks, really. Okay, now when you get them in packages, and you can get them from all sorts of places like the range, um, uh, Hobbycraft probably do them, places like that. Um, in the States, Hobby Lobby, places like that. Um, some of them come a little bit warped. So you, you're just looking for ones that sit pretty flat on the table. Okay. So that's the first thing. That's what we're going to build our trench out of, or our trench marker. Uh, some other things we're going to need. Pencil. Stanley knife. <clears throat> Still rule. That's pretty much it. We will also use some polyfiller um, and we'll probably use some green stuff to make the sandbags. And then we'll base it up uh, much like I've done with my other bases, uh, which will be uh, probably some sort of brown paint uh, followed by a sort of a creamier uh, colour um, dry brush just to pick out any of the points. Um, we'll probably do some sort of tan maybe we'll even do green sandbags it's uh 
I'll have to look at and see if I can find any pictures of, of um, Argentinian sandbags. But that's sort of the colours we'll work with. Um, and we'll do a bit of flock and a bit of tough as well. Although round trenches, you tend to find that uh, the, the dirt that's been d dug out of the trench is usually then mounted up around the uh, sort of kind of outside uh, to give a little bit more cover and to raise um, the kind of defences up a little bit so that uh, you don't have to dig the trench as deep. Uh, if you know, if you're looking for six foot, maybe do five foot and a foot of uh, a dirt and sandbags on top. So that's that. So oh, what are we going to do? So what I started off with is one of my jumbo craft sticks. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be good if we could have the the base lined up uh, against it? Uh, like so. And I thought, OK, that, that could work. Maybe a little, some sandbags in front, a bit of, maybe a mound of earth. Let's just zoom in a little bit there. OK. However, upon looking at that, I thought, that nah, doesn't look great. I want to show that they're sort of in the trench. So what I thought was, what if I took this stick, uh, this craft stick, and I cut a section out of it, the length of the two bases. So in fact, what we would get is something along the lines of, oh, sorry, I put my hands on the screen again. So something like so. However, obviously, we'll be, we won't have the bases on the, the craft stick, we'll cut it out. So that's a great idea, I thought. So. Here's one I did earlier in proper Blue Peter style. However, uh, what I've done here is also trimmed off the edges of the uh, craft stick so that you've kind of got this idea that it's, it's, a, it's a defensive area. Now, that looks pretty good. The problem I kept having is that the the ends were snapping off when I was cutting uh, the the length out of it. And that's because the lollipops aren't particularly strong. So the other option that you might choose if you were to do this method is not to cut off the edges and to leave them rounded like so. Doesn't, doesn't look too much different. I suppose it's a stylistic thing. And that's what it looks like. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do now is grab my polyfiller and start building up the front with a little bit of height to put the uh, to sandbags on. And also just to give the idea that the earth slopes are sort of down back to ground level uh, towards uh, away from the trench, I should say. So I'm going to crack on with that. And then I'm going to come back and show you what I've done. So we'll see you in a second. Well, welcome back to the workbench. And I've, as you can see, managed to add some filler. Now, um, one of the advantages of moving home and doing some minor repairs and stuff uh, before decorating and stuff was that I had a, a fresh tub of polyfiller. Now, this is a multi-purpose one. This is polycell it doesn't really matter to be fair if it's a brand or not probably be better not to just uh, as it would be a little bit cheaper but these tubs of filler they last forever i've used the smallest amount on these um, and we'll just zoom in a little bit there um so i've kept it fairly rough uh i don't think the uh, argentines would have done too much landscaping and smooth smoothed all the ground out uh while they were building their defenses so this is probably about what i'm aiming for and it's just a nice rough setting there uh to allow me to then build some sandbags on top of these um now the, the filler on this is probably going to need a good bit of time to dry. I think what I'll be doing is leaving these overnight. Um, bearing in mind I'm doing this uh, sort of uh, towards, uh, you know, getting towards five o'clock. Um, I'll just leave them overnight. That will give them time to dry. Um, I should just say I did use this this little trowel. It's a, I don't know if it's a winter or noon. I didn't, never realised that. But yeah, I used that. I, t I held it sort of at a 45 degree angle to the to the lollipop stick there and just dragged it down leaving a, a, a more of an amount towards uh, sort of this back edge 
and far less towards the front. You can almost see the lollipop stick coming through at the front. That's how thin it is at the front there. And it doesn't matter if in places it is lollipop stick, you can see it because ultimately once you've painted it, given it a dry brush, bit of flop, you'll never notice the difference. Um, so yeah, so that's this stage. Um, what we'll do is we'll, uh, I'll leave these overnight for you. It's gonna be a matter of moments um, and we'll come back to the workbench and uh, we'll have a look at how they've come out. Probably uh, look to maybe give them a, a coat of paint next. Um, although saying that I might add the sandbags next and then kind of prime them all at once. Um, for these, I'm probably just gonna grab a, maybe a black spray can and just prime these um, very quickly. It should be easy to do. Um, again, it'd be drying time, but anyway, we'll come to that uh, when we when they've uh, dried and hardened. So we'll be back momentarily. And welcome back to the workbench. So uh, the polyfiller has now dried. Um, and as you can see, it's a bit of a rough texture there. And if I just bring it up a little bit closer, you can see there is a, let's see if I can get that in shot there. You can see that it sort of slopes away towards the front of the base as we'd hoped for. Although it actually has helped give the base uh, actually a little bit more rigidity in itself, um, particularly the edges that I mentioned last time were, or towards the beginning of the video, I mentioned that they were a little bit weakened by the fact I'd cut that chunk out of it. Um, now obviously this one is the rounded edges, um, which, which um, actually looks quite good, I think. Um, and it also has the added strength, but having looked at the others, I think the polyfiller has helped just to uh, make that more solid. So um, what we're gonna do next, now that this is dry, is we're going to uh, make some sandbags to go on top. And in true uh, Blue Peter fashion, um, I'm going to explain how we do it and then I'm going to go away and uh, do it and then I'll come back with the results. Um, so things that we need for this part of the build. We need some trusted, um, well, we need a material to make the uh, the actual um, sandbags. So we're gonna use green stuff for this. So I've got it, I've actually got the stuff that comes in a sort of two part um, epoxy. I've had this for years, as you can see it's in, varying degrees of uh, state. Um, basically, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take equal parts of yellow and blue, you're gonna break them off and you're gonna stick them together. Now for this, I generally uh, have some water in a little cup um, off to the side, so I can dip my fingers into the water. The reason for that is it stops the green stuff sticking to you. Um, and basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it and fold it and stretch it and fold it and stretch it and fold it um, until you no longer have yellow and blue, but you just have a solid green color. And it gets to be a quite a deep green color, which you'll see shortly. Um, once we've done that, we're then going to roll it out uh, in on our mat um, in a sort of a sausage shape um, and flatten that sausage shape out. Um, once we've done that, we're gonna take a trusted craft knife and we're just gonna score some indents to show where the kind of the one, one um, sandbag finishes and where another starts. Once we've done that, we're going to then add some PVA glue. Here's my PVA glue. This is just a kid's one. It's a massive bottle. In fact, um, um, there we go. That would help if I um, zoomed out. As you can see, it still doesn't fit on the camera. It's a massive bottle. I think I've paid a pound or so from, for it from the range. Um, so it doesn't need to be anything fancy. We'll, what we'll do is we'll, with it using a paintbrush, we'll paint some of the PVA onto the edge of the trench line. We'll then stick our uh, sandbags down on the trench line and uh, we'll probably make a few extra sandbags to, to do both the sides and then to stick uh, a few on top in the middle. And when we're done, it's going to look a little bit like this. And here's where, here's one I did earlier, it comes in. Brilliant. So there's the three, and I'll just zoom in so we can get a bit closer there. There we go. So as you can see, 
We've got our line of sandbags along the front there. I've added in some additional sandbags on the sides. And just in some random spots, I've added a second layer to the sandbags. And you can add as much of these or as little of these as you want. Uh, it depends how uh, quickly of a prepared position you want it to be. Um, but basically, that's, that's then ready for the next uh, stage. And the next stage is simply to uh, to base coat them or to prime them. Now, I suppose you could do these with any paints, acrylic paints, and just slap it on with a big brush. I'm probably gonna take these outside with a, a rattle can. Um, I'll probably prime them in black because uh, they're being 10 mil. I like the smaller scales to prime things in black. Um, so that I can leave a little bit of the black showing when I'm doing the painting just to suggest uh, shadow uh, and it just helps the figure or, or whatever it is pop a little bit more. Um, just showing that black, it has that contrast between the other colours. So um, I'm going to get on and uh, make the sandbags for the last um, trench here. Um, I'll then take these outside and prime them, leave them to dry overnight. Of course, for you on this film, it will be seconds but for me, it'll be tomorrow and it will be uh, getting them painted before taking them to the club later that night, uh, later tomorrow night for um, for some play testing. So um, I'll be back in a flash with some uh, primed uh, trenches and I'll show you the colours I'm going to use to paint them. So I'll see you in a moment. And we're back and uh, as you can see I've managed to spray uh, these with uh, a sort of a dusting of black. I'm actually just looking at them now thinking that there are bits that I have sort of missed but ultimately once I get the paint on there it shouldn't matter too much. So the next stage then now I've got these uh, primed in black and uh, I think I gave them as I say a light dusting uh, of black Halfords primer and they'll probably dry in about three or four hours. Um, probably would have been dry a bit sooner, but as I had other things to be doing anyway, um, it didn't matter waiting a little bit longer to, um, to, to give them some more drying time. So the next thing I'm gonna do then is to paint these up. Once I've painted them up, we can then uh, think about the flock um, and just finishing them up. But just very quickly, we'll talk about paint. So what I've got here is a couple of GW paints and I've got a sort of a, a artistic, pretty cheap paint from the range, which I think cost me something like a pound not bad at all in fact they might have even been cheaper than that um but they're very good in terms of uh, their acrylic paints and um for doing things like terrain where you need to cover large areas i think it's it's a good way of doing it but um i am going to use some gw paints for the the ground cover and the reason i do that is because those are the paints that i use when i'm doing my um bases uh, for my figures and I want them to all tie in. So the first one to get the ground cover is this uh, GW Steel Legion Drab. Okay, so that would be the base color. And then I will give it a dry brush with this uh, Terminatus Stone, uh, which is a dry brushing paint, uh, specifically designed for dry brushing. Um, they're not too expensive, but obviously they are a bit more expensive than something like this. Um, with these, tend to give them a good shake, take off the lid, and then you've already got some in the in the lid to use. You don't need to pour it out and waste it. Um, but that's that's that colour is latte. Um, I've got some others. If if I don't quite like the latte for the sandbags, I might try some of the others. But I think that should work. Um, I couldn't really find any reference pictures to see to show uh, just on a quick search, there's probably more out there, but I, I couldn't find any that suggested that they were green instead of uh, sort of a, a khaki color. Um, and I just was thinking actually, if I do these as a, a khaki color, then they will they can be used for other periods as well. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna um, go away, get these painted. Once I've done that, I'll come back and I'll show you what I do with the flocking. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, and we're back. So the paint is on and the paint is dry and uh, we're ready to start doing some flocking. Now, uh, for this, I've got a couple of different uh, items uh, that we're going to be using. Um, 
the first is these uh, tufts. Oh, it's a bit closer. Let's zoom out there. So that's in. Right, there's out. Right, so we've got these tufts. Uh, they're two mil tufts. Um, I quite like them for uh, the 10 mil figures. They actually um, work really well. They're not too tall, um, but they do add a bit of uh, depth and, and volume to uh, the the terrain itself. So, yeah, um, these actually come came from a company called Serious Play. Um, I got them off eBay and got quite a lot of them. They weren't too expensive, but they will last quite a long time. Um, they are fairly uniform, but I don't think that matters too much um, in the way I'm using them. So that's great. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do use, oh, I've got some, I've got a bag of this saved from some previous, I don't know, some other, um, I don't know how well you can see. I, I I got this years ago, so I don't qu quite know where I got it from. But basically, it's a, it's an autumny sort of static grass type um, uh, flock or, or static grass, basically. So I'll be putting some of that on. Um, so I will uh, do that. Um, all I'm going to do is add some lovely. P uh, well, I'm going to paint some PVA on with a paintbrush. Um, put a little bit. Well, put the tufts on first, most likely. Um, and then put the uh, static grass on. I probably won't get too much near the um, sandbags because obviously when they are digging the trench, actually you're gonna have a lot of that grass probably um, dug up anyway, um, or crushed underneath piles of dirt. So um, it, there probably won't be a lot of uh, flock on this. Um, it will just be um, uh, kind of a small amount to, to represent that actually, um, you know, it is, dug into into the earth and um yeah i'm gonna stop wrapping it on now uh i'll come back in a moment when i've got these all flocked up for you so see you shortly and welcome back uh and that really didn't take too long at all which was you know really really pleasing um so there you go there's the finished um sandbags uh, or trenches, I should say. I think they look really good flocked up, actually. It does make a difference. Um, you can sort of just about make out where the tufts are. Um, and again, they, I think they just add to making it pop. Um, I'm really pleased with how they look, considering that they've probably taken making time in total maybe an hour uh, for the four of those, bearing in mind that there's some drying time in there as well. But the actual time I've taken um, put into it the very very easy steps there and hopefully something that you know um those at home who who are watching this might look at those and go actually they do look really good they look they look they look effective um and what i will do is just grab some figures in a moment and put them uh behind them and just you know show them what it looks like show you what it looks like um it might be that you think actually i could make those so i'll have a go and um do take it have a go enjoy it you can see at the back the rounded edges as opposed to the ones that have the, the ones cut off at an angle. To be quite honest, I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference one way or the other. Um, and they all, I think, blend in. I wish I'd kind of done two of each so it wouldn't have been so the odd one out. But that's all right. These things happen. So I'm going to uh, jump over and uh, get some figures and uh, give you... Uh, I'll be back in just a second. Um, in fact, it'll be a split second in, in your time. And we'll have a look at what they look like. And here we are. So there's the platoon in their uh, dug in positions. And I personally think they look quite good. Uh, this one at the front, it, it's a bit tight. The, the two bases don't quite fit in the gap. So I think I probably need to make it a little bit bigger. Or subsequently some filler has got down the sides. Possibly stopping it um, getting both of those in but you know what it sits on top sort of uh and actually it probably would still look good on the tabletop i think the others um they look really good and i think it just gives the impression that i wanted um i think these stack staggered across the table um will be good maybe a couple in one place and a couple in another but um hopefully hopefully they'll uh, look really good tonight for the play test so um that sort of brings us to the end of this video. I will obviously be doing more on the 10 mil terrain um, and also the 10 mil figures building up the Argentine army. Um, if you've liked this video, please give it a like, you know, 
feel free to put a comment in the comments box below. Um, it, you know, it, it would be fantastic to hear your thoughts um, and comments as, as you have in, in, in previous videos uh, many, many years ago. Um, if you've liked these and you want to see more videos, please subscribe. It really is encouraging. Um, and uh, I have already begun work on one of the other projects as well. So I shall be uh, getting a video recorded um, on that very soon. Um, I'm hoping maybe to do one video a week, um, but try to get, because all the projects, the bits that I'm doing are fairly small, again, hopefully keeping the video short as well. But I do apologize if this is dragged on. Once I've edited it together, we'll get a better idea. But anyway, enough of me rambling. Uh, here's some 10 mil uh, trenches. Um, if you've you know if you if you if you've liked these and want to make them at home give it a go it's good fun so until next time take care and uh, enjoy your gaming <laughs>